Hey everybody, it's Jane from Norman S. Wright. In the video I did a couple weeks ago on chilled water systems, I mentioned chilled beams, but I didn't talk about what they were. So this week I want to answer the question, what are chilled beams? So let's get started. Chilled beams are basically what they sound like, beams that are chilled by cold water. They use convection to provide cooling to a space. There are two kinds of chilled beams, passive chilled beams and active chilled beams. Passive chilled beams have no supply air inlet. They use natural convection currents to cool the space and a separate system is used to provide ventilation air for the space. Active chilled beams have a supply air inlet for ventilation air. So let's look at these two types separately starting with passive. Passive chilled beams will be mounted under a ceiling. You've got the casing and inside you have a water coil. And then there are openings on the top and the bottom, so the face of it is either perforated or linear bar grills. So as warm air rises from the room, it passes over the chilled beam and cools down and falls back into the space, providing cooling. As I said, there's no supply air inlet on the passive chilled beam, so you have to supply a separate system for ventilation air to meet your ASHRAE 62.1 requirements. An active chill beam will look something like this. You have your coil and you've got a supply air inlet for ventilation air. It also has induction nozzles. So it works like this. Supply air comes into the primary air plenum section and goes into the induction nozzle and then out slots in the face of the chill beam. Similar to a regular slot diffuser. And this whole thing would be mounted above the ceiling with the face flush with the ceiling. The air leaving the slots creates a low pressure zone at the face of the active chill beam, which draws air up into the chill beam and over the cooling coil, where it'll mix with the supply air and then go back out the slots. Let's move this over. Chill beams decouple the sensible and latent load in the space. The sensible load refers to the dry bulb temperature of the building, and the latent load refers to the wet bulb temperature of the building. You can think of it as the sensible load referring to the temperature on the thermometer and the latent load referring to the humidity. Chilled beams allow you to decouple the sensible and latent loads. The chilled beam handles the sensible load in the space. They take care of the heat associated with the lights, computers, and people in the space. And then the latent load is typically handled by a dedicated outdoor air system, a DOAS system, which I'll discuss in future videos. Let's move this over one more time. One big benefit to doing this is that you're using water to handle the space load and water is a much more efficient way to transfer energy. Water is almost 3,500 times as efficient when it comes to heat transfer. A one inch water pipe can transport the same heating and cooling capacities as an 18 by 18 inch air duct. This huge difference means that you can cool the space using piping that's one inch instead of running larger ductwork throughout your building. This will save space and money on ductwork and the transportation energy, such as the fans that are required to push the air through that ductwork. In chilled beam systems, you still have to run ductwork for the ventilation air, but this is usually a much smaller size because you're only bringing enough air to handle the ventilation requirements, not the entire load of the space. And so the ductwork is likely to be more like five or eight inch ductwork. So let's bring everything back on screen. That's an overview of the types of chilled beams and how they work. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover, leave a comment below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.